When she sang it, that's the way it should be sung. You knew when you heard her sing that she was the best. And she proved to be the best. She was the, the queen of swing. She is one of those singers who could sing the phone book. And it's very enviable. I'd love a voice like that. <laughs> Ella Fitzgerald, the gawky-looking, shy teenager in Harlem, who became one of the most popular singers of the 20th century. In a career that lasted over 50 years, Ella sold more than 40 million albums and was awarded 13 Grammys. That's what jazz is. You, you can sing one note in so many ways, and she's found the ways to do it. Ella appeals to people who aren't necessarily into jazz. She's easy to get into, but once you start to delve underneath the surface, there's no one that has the entire package the way she does the technique. It was just one of those things. Ella's groundbreaking series of songbook albums during the 1950s shattered the barriers of what a black female artist could achieve. Those bells that now and then ring. But privately, Ella was not always the exuberant figure who appeared on stage. Her troubled childhood was kept from the public, unknown until recently. The public never knew the full measure of what she had overcome in order to become the great singer, the great icon that she became. But with her extraordinary, untrained talent, Ella communicated the sheer joy of singing like no one else. It don't mean a thing if it ain't got that sway. Life has a crazy pattern and fortune comes to few. Ella Fitzgerald was born in Virginia in 1917. Her father, William, was a wagon driver. Her mother, Tempe, a laundress. Baby, what else can I do? My mother had a very beautiful classical voice. They tell me that my father was a guitar player, but I don't know, because I never met him. Her father died when she was just a year old. With her mother, Tempe, Ella joined the great migration of poor black families seeking a better life in the North. I was a kid about half past three. My mom said, daughter, come here to me. Say, Ella arrived in the New York suburb of Yonkers. But this is one thing. She soon found herself with a stepfather and half-sister. Take what you do with the way that you do it. Take what you do with the way that you do it. That's what gets resolved. Ella was not a conventionally attractive girl. And she was something of a tomboy, but very bright. You've learned your ABCs. You've learned your... When I was going to school, I took an academic course, and I felt that I wanted to be a doctor. But uh, I never really gave it that much thought. And then I started wanting to do something else. And I used to dance. I was known as one of the great little tap dancers. But I've always been sort of a shy person. The young Ella loved to listen to the radio. Among her favorites were popular 20s trio, the Boswell Sisters. The birds fell down. Three nice middle-class ladies, you know. <laughs> but they made music that swung really hard. And um, Connie Boswell, the lead singer of the Boswell Sisters, was Ella Fitzgerald's hero. They gave her a feeling of music being optimistic and 
kind of sounding easier than it was to do. And, um, and that sort of grace that was always a, a feature of her own work. 